Here we see the long thoracic nerve. It arises from the brachial plexus in the neck and descend down to uh, supply the serratus anterior muscle. And we ask you from which part of the brachial plexus this nerve arises. We see that brachial plexus has different parts like root, a trunk, division, cord and terminal branches. Uh, the uh, answer of the uh, from which part long thoracic nerve arises the answer is the from the root of the brachial plexus this long thoracic nerve arises here is the root of the brachial plexus cervical 5 to thoracic on these five roots uh, unite to form the trunk superior middle and inferior trunk this trunk finally divide into the anterior and posterior divisions and uh, these divisions unite to form the cords, lateral cord, posterior cord and medial cord. And um, what is the root value of the long thoracic nerve? The root value is the uh, cervical 5, 6 and 7. This is right thing. But uh, these are the branch of the roots of the uh, uh, brachial plexus. This brachial, root of the brachial plexus has two branches. Uh, has uh, two uh, branches. This one branch is the long thoracic nerve, another branch is the dorsal scapular nerve. An interesting thing is that the division has no branches. Here is the scapula. This scapula is held in position by the action of different muscles. Here we see from the back there is uh, the infraspinatus muscle, supraspinatus muscle, the levator scapulae and the rhomboidus minor, rhomboidus major and this side this is the uh, trapezius muscle uh, and, uh, and from the um, from the anterior aspect uh, the scapula is held uh, by uh, in position through the uh, uh, subscapularis and the serratus anterior muscle if we uh, if we see the position of this medial part of this uh, scapula uh, here is the my main muscle here is the rhomboidus uh, here is the levator scapulae here is the rhomboidus these muscles are in the medial aspect of the back but the anterior side of this uh, scapula uh, there is the insertion of the serratus anterior muscle if there is the injury of the uh, injury of the uh, nerve to the serratus anterior that is the long thoracic nerve uh, in the neck then the uh, paralysis of this uh, uh, serratus anterior muscle will happen when there is the paralysis of the serratus anterior muscle then the action of the uh, action of this rhomboidus major will uh, remain there only the action of the serratus anterior muscle will be lost so that the um, uh, so that uh, the um, the uh, normal position of the scapula uh, that is uh, that is uh, held here by the action of the serratus anterior that uh, remains in this position and the border and the border of the scapula uh, in uh, in the plane in the in the equal plane that is lost this scapula will be pulled medially by the action of the rhomboidus major and minor and it is uh, uh, normally this uh, pulling action of the rhomboidus major and uh, minor is uh, opposed by the action of the serratus anterior. When there is serratus anterior is paralysis, then uh, the, there is no opposed action, only pulling uh, of this medial uh, side into the uh, medial border of the scapula to this medial uh, direction. And uh, anterior pulling uh, uh, of the serratus anterior is lost, then it will elevate uh, like this. And this uh, forms the uh, winging of the scapula. Uh, back of a uh, person, where we see the normal scapula in this uh, part, uh, this area. But when there is a paralysis of the serratus anterior muscle, here we see that the scapula comes more medially, and this uh, blade of the scapula is uh, pulled upward. And this is the uh, this is the winging of the scapula. So uh, this winging happened due to the injury of the serratus anterior uh, muscle due to injury of the long thoracic nerve. This is the clinical significance of the long thoracic nerve.